I'm Mari Silby with Light Reading here talking SCTE and Energy 2020. And right now I have with me Dan Lowe from Volt Server. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. So can we start by maybe talking about what it is that Volt Server does? And if you could describe the technology, that would be great. Awesome. Yeah, so Volt Server has an invention. We call it digital electricity and uh, essentially makes electricity safe to touch. So what we do is we have a central transmitter that looks like an IT server. But what it's really doing is taking AC or DC power uh, into this transmitter, and then it has individual line cards uh, that are going to send electricity to 24 different locations. And on each of those, those lines, you can use standard Ethernet cable or alarm cable. And the reason you can do that safely is because we break the electricity into 600 little pulses of electricity per second. And we check for safety 600 times per second. So literally, each little line card that's going to power a mobile radio or an IT server uh, or potentially a, a set-top box television mm -hmm. is going to send little pulses 600 per second, and it's going to check for safety. And if we see a little bit of leakage on that packet, like someone touching the line or a loose connector that's starting to arc, we literally just don't reconnect the line and send another pulse. Uh, we do have policy software that tells you when there's a problem, logs a problem. We'll try to recreate uh, the connection uh, automatically. But at the end of the day now, with no metallic conduit using off-the-shelf Ethernet or alarm cable, you can transmit electricity around buildings and campuses and cities. Wow, so that's a tremendous potential uh, safety improvement. How does that impact how cable operators, for example, may think about their strategies going forward for powering? Absolutely, yeah. So there's probably three areas that are uh, valuable to the cable operators right out of the gate. The first is with their traditional telephone system, 48 volt uh, powering system, they now can't get enough power to the racks that are installed. So as there's more over the top video and you start to digitally transform your network like many of the cable companies will do over the next two years, they need more power per rack that 48 volts can't deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, now they can simply run a small alarm cable over the same cable tray that has your fiber optic cables in it, drop it into that same rack and add double or triple the amount of power in that rack. Uh, at the back end, our transmitter also can plug directly into a microgrid. So the Energy 2020 being the, the, the subject of uh, today's conference and workshop, you now can take a microgrid, drop it in. They can have solar, wind, lithium ion batteries, as wow. well as AC grid. And you literally just take the output of that and plug it right into our transmitter. Then you zip your cables out to a little receiver that puts those 600 pulses back together again. Mm -hmm and you have instant electrical distribution. The two other areas to focus, I think, with the cable companies is this coming year, you're gonna have free spectrum from the FCC to make yes. our phones happy, CBRS. Yes, right, uh, Citizens so Broadband Radio. You got it, so CBRS, I think, is underestimated how powerful it's gonna be. So now, we're already powering LTE radios in over 400 sports stadiums, airports, office towers, hotels, for the mobile network operators, AT&T, Verizon Wireless, T-Mobile. Now you'll be able to have a Comcast or a Charter as an example or Google even blasting CBRS to make the Verizon anchored MVNO phone happier as you go. I see. And the last one I think we're, we're relevant is within a building, you can put our transmitter in the basement of the building and you can run critical power up to every office and offer power as a service to do, say, a Comcast uh, broadband modem and Wi-Fi. So when the power does go out, at least your employees can do their day-to-day -day job while they wait for the power to come back on. Interesting. So is there, there are more power demands on the network, whether that's from, from densifying or from adding capabilities within a facility, this is an opportunity to, to optimize some of that. That's correct. Yeah, and I think a good way to think of it is an overlay. So you already have wall outlets around any office that you look around or mm -hmm. any building. But when you start to look up to the ceiling where there's LED lights and sensors and radios now to help us communicate, then as you go out onto a campus where you have kiosks and you have access controls and security cameras, those are all things that can be revenue sources, but they're also things where there are no outlets. So being able to just right. zip a cable, micro trench it, run it through the riser in the building, you get a service outlet or a convergence outlet wherever you need it. Wow, interesting. So real quick, over the, the life cycle of, of a deployment, let's say, sure. what should service providers be looking at or what should they be thinking about over that lifetime? I think the way we approach it is give us a chance to do one pilot, uh, potentially here in a data center doing a pilot mm -hmm. uh, as one example. And if you're getting good results, let us then over the life, the ecosystem, then let us show you how you can reuse those exact same skill sets and the exact same solution to start to do other revenue, or it could even be reputation building services also. So I think over the next five years, 
both on where can we distribute power to be of use, but also where can we connect for energy 2020 into microgrids, and our product itself uses less copper and uses less electricity. So it's a great way to make strides in your energy 2020 initiatives also. Great, well, you're in the right place here today. All right, I am, and I'm uh, very thankful to be here and thankful for the time. Thank you so All much, right. appreciate it.